Hey y'all, welcome to the 30 Source for YouTube channel. I'm Joseph, and today we're going to be continuing our design of the GoPro tool. Uh, we're trying to make this 3D printable, and in the last episode, we created this, which is the wrench component. We optimized it for 3D printing, as you can see, kind of by the change in design here. The only issue with it was that the hex in the center didn't quite fit right with our uh, thumb screw, and the reason for that is really twofold. We think that the angle here that we estimated is a little bit off as far as the angle of the hexagon itself, and then the hexagon appears to be a little bit too large. We're going to reduce that as well. And then we also want to expand upon this and make it uh, more like the actual GoPro tool by adding a hole and then adding a bottle opener. So we're going to do that in this episode. I uh, hope that you enjoy this, and if you do, please consider subscribing. Uh, thank you for your time. All right, so we're back in Fusion now. Uh, the big thing we want to try to do is make this hex fit a little bit better. I think the main thing is that that angle is a little bit off. So, it seems like it was a little steeper here, so I'm actually going to reduce this angle some. Might try like one over five, maybe. Yeah, so that looks a little closer uh, to what it should be. And like I said, this is really just a guess and check. Uh, I know that it's off-centered, so at this point, it's not you know, in the midline here. And uh, I think it's, it's roughly close to where it is. It could be 110, maybe. But like I said, you could sit here and try to measure that, but it's pretty hard to measure five degrees with little parts like this. So I think I'll try this and see if we kind of overcorrect it. And if we did, then obviously we try 110 next. So uh, that adjusted a little bit. I also wanted to reduce the size of the hexagon just slightly. So I might try 8.5 and see how that does because I think it tapers actually as you go into that cutout part on the thumb screw. And the other thing that we wanted to do was reduce this uh, circle diameter. So come in here again, and obviously you could do all these operations at once, but uh, I'm gonna try just 21. It's not a big difference, but just see how that works out. Okay, so I think that's a relatively reasonable looking piece there. So the next thing, I'm also gonna change the color so y'all can see it a little better. Uh, let's see. So the next thing, we want to keep all that functionality of the, of the piece, so we can go ahead and go back to this sketch again. And it really doesn't need to be uh, 30 millimeters wide, it just needs to be wide enough. You know, generally about 3 millimeter wall thickness is relatively strong, so if you want 3 millimeters on each side of that 21 diameter, which you can do, delete this and then make the wall thickness here three. So now it's gonna be smaller, but I think that that would still probably work for what we're trying to do. And it'd be easier to put on a keychain. It wouldn't get in the way as much as the 30 millimeter one. Next thing, like I said, you can do all this at once. I just like showing the updates as I go for uh, those that are interested and then Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and draw out uh, the remainder of the, of the piece just so we can go ahead and kind of start thinking about that as well. Obviously you could print off the updated version and then check it and do this after that. But uh, for me, I think I'm ready to kind of move on and see what we can do over here. So, so this is gonna be the little cutout for the keychain. Um, just wanted to mention that probably similar. I like to try to make things pretty equal if I can. So I think three and three. And then the actual size of this, we didn't actually measure it, but uh, probably more than that. Go with like eight or so. And this is kind of just a preference thing. Uh, doesn't really matter. Then our total distance, again, we could measure the existing device, but I think you know, 50, I mean, we can adjust it obviously pretty easily. So now this is the cutout for the keychain. And the last thing is to add 
the uh, bottle opener component. And again, this is kind of just preference for me, but I, I kind of like these to line up if possible. So you can do collinear here, and then we're gonna make that and that collinear. So now these are in a straight line together. And uh, the way the bottle opener looks, obviously it has a little hook on it on this end. So one way you can do that is just to make a circle in the center here and make the sides tangent. So make that tangent, make this tangent, and make that tangent. The issue with that is you, obviously you don't really have any material here. So, so the next thing you could do is just make another circle that's a smaller diameter there. And like I said, I haven't even measured uh, what what the actual size is, but it's, it's really easy to adjust that. Probably a little bigger than this, if I had to guess. We're gonna need some type of little dividing line here. Something kind of like that. So that we can stop the Imagine us extruding all that. The horizontal vertical. We can try this in the midline. Uh, I'm not entirely certain the best way to do this part. So if we do the dot itself. Yeah, so for some reason they, they wouldn't do that with a line. I kind of forgot about that. And so the way that this looks, I'm gonna pull a picture up on the screen, but essentially it kind of hooks around and then comes up and then goes across. So really, uh, this should actually transition into a wall because there's not really a cutout. So if you imagine this is the hook component, we need to make a line here to basically extrude that out and then we want to extrude this portion. So now again a horizontal vertical, I like that a lot. So now th those are horizontal with each other. So now hopefully you'll be able to see kind of what I was trying to do here. Bring up the sketch again. So now we can extrude Let's do it both sides. So on both sides, we want to go to the object because your object, your distance can change. If we change the extrusion, uh, it'll update automatically. So I forget to do that a lot, unfortunately. And there's that. Obviously, I want to move this back because that looks a little janky to me. So we want this to be in line with that. And since I updated that other part after the fact, let's go in and delete that part. So I actually want this part to be collinear, which now it distorts that. So we've got to increase the diameter on this part. So that'll look a little better, I think. Now we just need to update the extrusion. Okay, so that's better. I think that we should also adjust this thickness. So all these are three millimeters except for this. And uh, to me, it would look better if everything was three millimeters, including this distance, which currently is three. So now I think we would uh, remove some of these other coincidence. So we can make another 
another lawn here. That horizontal. Obviously, this is not very neat. The point is just to, to do it and then see how we want to change it later. Because you could go back and remake this relatively quickly. It might not seem like it, but... So now, uh, that looks like the general kind of idea we were going for. Obviously now, to make it look a lot better, add some, some fillets. So, you know, that's pretty respectable, I think. Overall, uh, I think that pretty functional, relatively straightforward to make, and I think that it would probably work okay. Uh, I think now we're at a point where we can print this off. Um, you know, it's just not that much different than the part that we had. One thing we might want to do is increase the thickness here a little bit just because in general uh, plastic is not going to be <laughs> as strong as the aluminum that GoPro uses, but I think that that would be something to consider. But I think now we're at a point where uh, you know if you wanted to make it look even better, uh, one thing, <laughs> easy way to do that is just to add a little chamfer on both sides, 0.5. This makes it look more refined to me. You can see that. Added the, the chamfer all on the edges. So I think that that overall looks relatively good. I think it's worth printing off now, seeing how it does, and seeing if it fits okay. Again, let's see how long this takes to print. Uh, all right, so it's imported into Fusion now. Down, slice. Uh, so this would take 30 minutes and cost a quarter to make. So I think that you know, that's worth attempting. The other thing I would change with this design, I think just looking at it, would be to make these uh, the same radius you know, around there. I think that would look a little bit better then increase the thickness on that. So that's just things that are kind of out in the back of my head currently, but I think uh, right now it'd be worth printing. And just to note, this quarter that's gonna cost, that's with Prusa, uh, Prusa Mint filament, which is pretty expensive. So if you got stuff off Amazon, this would be even cheaper. So uh, the point I'm trying to make is that I think sometimes people take too much time you know, thinking about their designs in CAD and not just printing it off, especially if you have access to the 3D printer. I mean, that's, obviously very cheap. You can learn a lot more about printing it, uh, playing with it and seeing if it works than kind of thinking about it in CAD, or at least that's my philosophy on it. So we'll print this off and then I'll show you all what it looks like after it's done. So here's our two prototypes with the original tool device. And you can see that overall they're pretty, pretty similar. Uh, you know, GoPro recess this little portion of the actual tool and we didn't do that with, with this version but uh i think overall it's coming out relatively good as far as the fit goes uh, we still don't have a perfect fit and i think i think we did correct that angle appropriately but it's just not fitting down in the slots. So I think the issue is there's these little protrusions. I know it's hard to tell within the hexagon that is kind of blocking it. And uh, I think that if we reduce the hexagon even more, then it would fit. So I think the next thing to do would be just to maybe make this a little bit thicker just so that it doesn't snap there. Round these a little bit more symmetrically and then reduce the hex size a little bit more. So I think after that, we should have it in a pretty good shape as far as uh, being functional at least. And 
we want to, we can reduce the, the width of it. You know, it's pretty similar in size right now to the original. If you look at the round portion, it's a little bit smaller, but if you look at that part, it's a little, a bit thicker. So uh, I think that overall it's turned out pretty good. Just a few minor changes we could make and then print off one more version. And I think at that point we'll be pretty satisfied overall, you know, and come back and do some more iterations on it. But as far as functionality, it should work. The big thing is obviously to make it fit within this. So really gonna cut down on the size of this, probably about half a millimeter or so, just to make sure it fits. And then uh, hopefully it'll have a, a snug fit and then we can, you know, kind of evaluate for aesthetic purposes if we want to change anything. So that's what I'm planning to do next and I'll uh, take you all back into the Fusion.